Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. It's that time of the year, the beginning of the boa and python breeding season. Of course, we've got to get a lot of things ready before we get started. We're going to show you how we do it. You're watching Snake Bites. When you're starting a breeding season of any animal, there's a few questions you have to ask yourself, and they are one, what animals do I have? Two, are they large enough and safe enough to breed? Three, what do I want to put together for the results I want to get? Let's go ahead and start with what do I have to breed? The best way to know what you have is to inventory. And when you have this many snakes, it's not as easy as a task as you think it is. You've got to go through each and every cage, and that's thousands of cages, and mark down what you have. Make sure the animals are completely healthy, the proper weight, and then you can decide what you're going to put together because after all, a healthy snake is the only way it's going to produce. The next step is to make sure animals are the proper weight. Take for instance ball pythons, which are a good example because a lot of people have spent a lot of time talking about weight. What happens if your animal is too thin is you're going to either jeopardize the animal's health during breeding or it's not going to produce for you. A good example in ball pythons are all males should be somewhere between 500 and 1,000 grams. 500 being on the small side but still able to breed. And once they get over 1,000 grams, males get a little bit lazy. So I like to keep them right in that 800 or 900 gram range for the perfect range. When it comes to the females, you can really start breeding them at 1,200 grams or even a little bit less, hoping that they're going to continue to feed and get to a higher weight during the breeding season. 1,500 grams is typically the weight that most breeders will want to make sure a female is when she's about ready to produce. But again, the bigger the female, the better. So if you have a 3,000 gram girl, it's just going to increase your chances of having a successful clutch, not to mention the size of eggs in that clutch. Now that you know what you have and what's good for breeding, here comes the tough part, what to breed to what. That's right, that can be the most difficult choice of the entire season because it's kind of hard to change midstream. You really want to nail that one right from the beginning. Take for instance the champagne ball python. This is either a dominant or co-dominant. So there's a lot of things you can breed it to. One of the morphs I definitely want to get into is a pastel citrus calico, another double co-dominant animal. What's going to be cool about that is I can get a pastel champagne, I could get pastel calicos, I could get calico champagnes, and I'm hoping for some pastel citrus champagne calicos. Take for example this super enchi ball python. This is actually the dominant form of the co-dominant enchi ball python, which means everything I breed this into is going to be enchi. Now this male can actually go to five, six, or seven females, so I'm only going to share one animal that I'm really excited to get it into, and that's actually what I call a stinger blast, which is an enchi pinstripe. I can't wait to see what a super enchi pinstripe is going to look like. This is a project I've been excited about for about six or seven years. This is a lavender cinnamon pastel, and I'm taking it back to a cinnamon het lavender, and I hope, the odds are kind of long, but I'm hoping I hit the super cinny lavender albino. That sucker, when it gets old, is going to be a solid purple snake. There's nothing cooler than that. Again, there's a lot that can be done with a male snake like this, especially one that has multiple genes. And this has three genes going on in it. It's got a ghost gene, which is recessive, a dominant spider, and a dominant pinstripe. So again, this is a ghost spinner. I'm going to take it to a few projects, but the one I'm going to share with you right now is a Super Mojave Ghost. That way, I should get Ghost Mojave Spinners, and those suckers should be really cool. This is a yellow belly lemon blast. It's got three genes going on, yellow belly, pastel, and pinstripe. Last year, we were able to take a pastel yellow belly and breed it to a super stripe and produce a pastel super stripe, and holy cow, were those awesome. So this year, I want to take and add the third gene, which is the pinstripe gene, hoping to produce a yellow belly pastel pinstripe super stripe. I don't even know what to call it, but it's going to be a cool looking animal. This is actually a really unique animal. This is what we call a gold dust spider. It's actually a new project here where we have. We think it's a super opal spider, but we're not even 100% sure. It's the only one that we've ever produced and the only one we've ever seen. So I can tell you what, I'm going to be trying to make some more gold dust, but in the meantime, I'm going to make sure to take it into a killer blast so we can maybe inject a little bit of pastel into it, and that should make it even cooler than it already is. Hey, Cal. What's going on, dude? What are you doing? Oh, well, you know, I decided to take on a really tough breeding project this year. Um, trying to get George to get laid. Oh. So I'm creating him an internet profile. See if I can get any hits back in your responses right now. So it's pretty tough though, man. You can help yeah. if you want. Well, what do you got so far? Um, well, I'm just starting right now. Um, we got his name and everything in there and 
Is it man seeking woman or woman seeking man? Um, I think we'll go with man seeking woman. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. yeah, I was thinking about that. I'm sure. <coughs> okay, um, like what does a woman want in a man? Name something. Sense of humor. Sense of humor. Good one. Does George have a sense of humor? What about um, tough, like strong? Everybody yeah, wants tough. Everyone wants a strong man. And George is kind of tough. Them. Yeah, he's kind of tough, right? Mm. I don't know. I see him lifting the other day. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't just, matter. Just, yeah. just keep going with it. Mm. Athletic. Yeah. Everybody athletic. wants a man's athletic. Yeah. Okay, George is athletic, right? He, right. He, he can good. run. Finances. Fine. That's a good one, dude. Financially stable. He, His car doesn't even run. Doesn't run. What activities is he good at? Mm. What? Dancing? He can slow dance. Everybody can slow dance. Everybody All you gotta do is move. It's hard, mm. hard working? No, he's always on his iPhone. He works hard at that. Alright, looks pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Let me just submit this. Wait a second, I need a picture. Yeah, yeah, Obviously. that's always important right there. Right there, that's the picture. Really? That one? Yeah. Is that the only one you have? Yeah, what's wrong with it? Just roll with it, I guess. He's cute. <coughs> yeah, adorable. Alright, submit that. Looks good, now, okay. Now we just wait. Yeah. <laughs> George is gonna get laid. <laughs> Finally. We'll see. On this week's Comment of the Week, on the How It's Made Snake Racks episode, the question was, what's your favorite TV show? And Oblivious Nexus said, Toss up between Firefly and Dexter. There's something just totally wicked about a serial killer who goes after other serial killers. But Firefly has a special place because of how amazing it was and how popular it still is, despite how badly it was screwed up by the channel they tried to play it on. Box, I think? I just don't DVD. Makes life easier. No doubt when you can put a cool twist on a serial killer TV show, it's a must-see. For the record, my favorite TV show, Ghost Hunters on the Sci-Fi Channel. Until next time, you guys keep sending me creative comments, and I'm going to feature you on a future episode. All right, guys, it's Kyle's Question Week. Now, obviously, everybody dates, so everybody has some kind of dating horror story. For instance, one time I was online, I filled out a profile, and I was conversing back and forth with this chick, and it uh, seemed like our personalities fit together well, even though she didn't have a picture. She said she was blonde-haired, blue-eyed, athletic build. I said, great, this is worth going on a first date. So I went on a date, and this chick showed up, except she had black hair, blue contacts, and athletic build like a linebacker. I think she threw shot put. Now, for some people, that might work out. For me, not so much. I want to know from you guys, what are some dating horror stories, blind dates, first dates? Let me know. Text or video comment below. So there it is, the very beginning stages of getting ready for the boa and python breeding season. We're going to be doing shows that walk you through each and every step, so make sure you stay tuned. Until next time, you've been watching Snake Bites.